Hi, I'm Zenith, and for the past few weeks, I've had nothing better to do besides make memes, go on Twitter, and buy copious amounts of furry art. And I got to thinking, how could I combine all of these things into one abysmal, awful, abomination of a creation? So yeah, you guessed it from the title, I made a furry detector. But what is it? Basically, it is a small program I coded in Python that is used on Twitter users and determines whether or not they are a furry. Here's a quick example. I put my Twitter handle into this input field, get the user, and finally hit run detector. Wow. Holy shit, I'm a furry? The program starts by finding the specified user. Once it finds a user, it collects all the raw text from their tweets and cleans it up for processing. It gets rid of punctuation, emojis, and a thing called stop words. These are words that we don't really care about and really add no value. Words like the, and, a, and, it, need, and so on. From this now processed text, it collects every word and compares these words to what I call the furry word database. It's a collection I created containing all the most common words furries use on Twitter. And you won't believe what's number one! It's the word good. That's it. Nothing special. Anyways, here's the list of the top 50 most used furry words. My program then creates an organized list of 1,000 numbers representing what I call the relative relevancy score for each furry word. I calculate the score by dividing how many times a user typed the current furry word by how many times they typed their most used word on Twitter. If they use the word oo 100 times, the word oo 0 times, and the word good 200 times, oo gets a score of 0.5, oo gets a score of 0, and good gets a score of 1. And this process is done for all 1,000 words in the list. Next, this data is passed through an artificial neural network. I'll call her Anne. I feed Anne the data. She cherishes it and cradles it through her two network layers, and then spits out a probability. In order to get this process to work, I had to train Anne on a data set of about 500 users, which translates to about 1.5 million tweets and 37 million words. And even with all this data, it's only accurate about 93% of the time, so there's definitely room for improvement. Regardless, there you have it, that's the architecture of my program. Minus the UI, the initial data collecting, the API handling, the optimization, database generation, and... But who cares about that nonsense? Not me! After about two weeks of work and 2,000 lines of code, we now got a lean, mean, furry detecting machine. If you skip my, uh, how it works, it's alright. I'm not mad, I'm just honestly disappointed. But that's okay, I'll get right ahead into why you clicked here in the first place. The odds one out is not a furry. I know, it's surprising, I didn't expect it at all. Now, Majira Strawberry is absolutely furry, and so is Zillion Ross, Beta Ed Deletta, and hiya! I bet you didn't expect Nas Hyena to be a furry. Anyways, here's a list of people on Twitter, all with their percentage chance of being a furry. I asked my Discord server, link in the description, to hand me some of their Twitter handles. So here's the results for some people in my Discord. And for everyone who wants to be tested, when this video goes live, I'll be posting a tweet where you can comment below and I'll try my best to test everyone who replies to the tweet. So like I said earlier, this program only has about a 93% accuracy, so we're going to see some very peculiar things that we wouldn't normally expect. Let's take Ascari Husky for a second. Ascari Husky is a very well recognized furry, yet he gets a very low score on my detector. Why is this? Well, uh, if we look at his Twitter feed, we can see that not all of his tweets are specifically about furries. Uh, specifically, we see a lot of car tweets, right? And you can also see this with Shiny Odd. Uh, he is a Irish YouTuber who does uh, like Forza Horizon, I don't know, a car game, I'm gonna be honest. So what we can see here is that a saying words that aren't really necessarily related to furries can really dock your score on the predictor. 
Another quick thing to note is that every word should have a relative relevancy score with enough data. For example, with Majira Strawberry's data set, we see that every single number has a percentage and that the highest percentage is colon 3 and it's highlighted in blue in this example. The difference is the percentages and stuff like colon 3 will really set off the detector. The main thing I think this program does is it highlights a few very characteristic words. So for example, Fursuit and Fursuit Friday are two words that really come to mind that only furries use and no one outside of the furry fandom would use. While in comparison, words that relate to cars or relate to like streaming and Twitch and YouTube, uh, they're used much more common outside of the furry lingo to the point where you could discern if someone is or isn't a furry by if they had these little key words sprinkled into their tweets. What this means is that if a Twitch streamer were to talk about Twitch, they'd be flagged as 0% and absolutely not a furry. But if they were talking about Twitch and talked about fursuits or fursuit Friday or anything having to do with furry specifically, then they'd instantly be keyed in and would be detected as a furry. And because of my relative relevancy score, it's gonna pick up that Twitch or YouTube was used more often than furry words. So it's going to lower your score. That's why you see uh, Ascari Husky and Shiny Odd both with much lower scores than they should. Now, another thing that really can dock your score is how many tweets you post. I tried accounting for this with the relative relevancy score. For example, Dexidrus, he only has nine tweets at the creating of this video. We can see that with such little data, it can't really make a good prediction, so that's why the prediction is so low. So we can see that the two main things that can get a prediction wrong are keywords that aren't related to furries, which is kind of obvious, and also a lack of data. Which to me is alright, because you shouldn't be able to predict if someone's a furry with only 9 tweets, and to be honest, I'd prefer it to get more wrong that aren't a furry than get false positives and say, hey, this guy's a furry, when they clearly aren't. But in all honesty, I have no clue. I made this really as a toy and not really something very rigorous. That's just my interpretation of how I think the program works because I am using machine learning so I don't really understand like what it's doing to determine these biases. So at the end of the day, it's just my analysis and you can have a completely different reason as to why this person's 100% and this person is 0%. Feel free to go down in the comments and say if I'm absolutely wrong or if you agree with me. I want to see what you think about this. Anyways, that pretty much wraps up the video. Please do all the YouTube things like subscribing or whatever. I plan on doing more shenanigans with coding in the furry community, so stay tuned. Go check out my Twitter if you want to be tested. I don't know why else you would because it's kind of garbage. Um, but anyways, thank you for watching all the way through my video and I'll see you in my next one.